Now, now let's create another function, a function that's going to accept in three arguments, basically the present value, the monthly interest rate, and then the number of month. And basically return the future values. That, that's what the question said. Okay, so we are going to create a function, okay? It says, it says over here. Um, so write a program that prompts a user to enter the account's present value, monthly interest rate, and the number of months that the money will be left in the account, which we've pretty much done in the function. The program should pass these values to a function that returns the future value of the account after the specified number of months. Um, after, after the specified number of months, pretty much. All right, so the program should display the account's future value. So let's create a function called future value, okay? And this function is going to accept in some arguments. So let's define some parameters. It said the program should pass these values. Okay, it's talking about the account present value. Okay, so let's define a, a parameter for present value. Okay, it doesn't matter if this present value name is the same as this. It doesn't matter because these two functions are considered different. So basically, these two variables, the scope of this present value variable is within the ask for details function. The scope of this present value variable is within the future, uh, future value function. Okay, they are considered two different variables because they are in two different functions. Okay, they don't see each other. They are like twins, but they, you know, they, they don't see each other, all right? They are like twins, but they are not the same, okay? So this future value function is going to accept in the present value. It's also going to accept in the interest rate, the monthly interest rate. So I'm defining a parameter for monthly interest rate. And again, the name doesn't matter if this name is the same as this. Okay. And it's also going to accept in the number of months that the money will be left in the account. So I'm just going to say number of months. Again, it doesn't matter if the names are the same as the, the, the variables above. It doesn't matter if this variable is the same as this. All right. So now if this var if this function accepts these val v values, right, or these these um, arguments, it's going to use them to calculate the, the future value. And we've been given the formula here, right? And so now let's go ahead and calculate the future value. We know p, all right. The question says p is the present value of the account. This value is going to represent whatever present value that whoever. So this present value is going to be a parameter for it's going to hold whatever present value whoever calls this function passes. In other words, these va these values or these parameters are representing or they will hold the values passed by whoever calls this future value function. And so to calculate this, we basically use a formula. P, right, which is the present value, the present value of the account. So P, which is the present value, so present value here times, okay, we can use a, the asterisk, okay, or the star to represent multiplication. Okay, so P times, we have our parentheses, right, we have 1 plus I, we know I is the monthly interest rate. This, this parameter is going to represent our monthly interest rate, so I'm going to copy it, paste it here. So it's 1 plus our monthly interest rate, right, close parentheses, raised to the power T. Now, now there are several, several ways we can do this raised to the power. We can import the math module, or we can also do just two asterisks, which means this whole parentheses raised to the power. Okay, two asterisks means raised to the power. And then wh what is it raised to the power? It's raised to the power t. t is the number of months, and this parameter variable, okay, this parameter is representing a number of months. So raised to the power number of months this way all right and this calculation over here is the same as this here which is equal to our future value right so let's go ahead and create a, a variable in this function and call it future va value and assign the result of this calculation to future value once we are done with future value let's go ahead and return it return future value Okay, return the future value. All right, so now we are done with this function. We are done with ask for details. Now, let's go ahead and create another function called main, which is going to run our program. 
All right, so in most program, programming languages, or in most, pro, yeah, most programming languages, the main function, or the main method is basically the function that runs when your program, or the, the first function that is called when your program runs, okay? It's the first function that's called, is a function that has your program, basically. It's a function that calls every other function. And it's, it's in most programming languages, that's how it is, right? And so let's create a main function. Okay, basically a main function should be the function that is called, the, the first function that's called when your program starts. And that should basically start your program. That's where, that's your starting point. That's where your program is. So let's create a main function that's going to have our program and that's going to call every other function. All right, so the first thing we want to do, right, is we want to ask for details. We have a function for that. So we want to ask for details here. Okay, we want to ask for details. And we know that ask for details is going to ask the user for a couple of things, all right? And after the user has typed in all those values, it's going to return three variables. So we need variables to receive those. And remember I said that it has to be in the same order. If you have if these variables or these values are being returned in the same order. The first value that's being returned is the present value. So we, so when we have a variable here, <coughs> the very first, <coughs> sorry, the very first variable, I, I basically declare here present value. Okay, is going to hold this. Okay, I'm going to have another variable for monthly interest rate, which is going to hold the monthly interest rate. And then I'm going to have another value for number of month, which is going to hold number of months. So the ask for details is returning these three values in this, in this order. And so the very first value that's being returned is present value. And that's why I have a, a variable called present value that's going to hold this value. The second value is going to be monthly interest rate. So that's why I have an, a variable called monthly interest rate going to receive this second value that's being returned. And then I have a number of month variable that's going to accept in the number of month value that's being returned. So they have to be in the same order. Okay, what, whatever order you're returning it, you basically have to have variables to, uh, to receive them in the same order. And again, it doesn't matter if these are the same names, okay? These are considered two different things. Uh, these variables are considered two separate variables because they are, in di they are in different functions. They don't see each other. The scope of this is only in as for details. The scope of this is only in the main function. Okay, the scope of this is only in the future value. They don't see each other. They're considered separate functions because, sorry, they're considered separate values of separate variables because they are in separate functions. All right, so now we'll have the present value, we'll have the monthly interest rate, and we'll have the number of months. So now since we have th that, those details, we can basically calculate the future value. Okay, we can... Um, we can we can basically create a variable, okay. Um, so let's see. Let, let me see how we're going to do this. All right. So we can basically create since we all, we only dealing with one value here that's going to be printed, right? We can we can start we can print we can we can start start constructing a string that's going to print our value, right? And then one, once we want to print our value, we just call the future value function, pass in these arguments, and then it's going to display to us the value, the future value. So let's create a print function, a regular print function, and pass in a, basically create a string and say the future value um, so basically an account, so we can create a nice string actually, you can create a nice string and say an account, okay so an account with present value and since we have the value, present value here we can use it in our string, so account with present value, I'm going to pass in these the, the, what's going to be displayed into the print function as separate arguments, right? So on, on account with present value, comma, I can use present value here. So account, on account with present value, present value. Um, and I'm going to say at a... I don't have to have a, a, a space. Um, I don't have to have a... Yeah, space there. So an account with present value, present value, at a monthly interest rate. So monthly interest rate. Hold on, that's our monthly interest rate, right? So at at the at the monthly interest rate, right, comma. Okay, so if this is let's say 
0 0.02, it's going to say at a 0 0.02, and I want to say monthly interest rate. Okay. Left in a bank account, left in an account. Okay, left in an account. Okay, so now now I am going over this over the basically I'm basically cross this line. So I want to break this into two. I'm going to break it somewhere somewhere here. Before I break any line in Python, I have to type in a backslash. Okay, and then hit enter. Okay, so at the uh, monthly monthly interest rate left in an account for now I can use number of months for number of months. Okay, string month will get you a future value or will get yeah we'll get we'll, we'll yeah we'll we'll earn you a future value a future value so let's break this also into two before you break in a line in python you type in a backslash hit enter okay month will earn you a future value okay off Okay, and then I'm now I'm going to type in the last argument, which is future value, right? To calculate the future value, we basically use the fu the function future value, and we pass in because the future value needs in these arguments, which we have here, as in, in so it needs these um, yeah it needs these you know arguments basically when when we are passing it in the main, so we have these arguments which is present value, monthly interest rate, and number of months. We have them. And so it needs the present value, the monthly interest rate, and number of months this way before it can display the future value this way. All right. We're going off the screen, so I'm going to break this here. Before you break in the line in Python, you type in the backslash, hit enter. All right. So an account with present value, present value at a monthly interest rate, monthly interest rate, right? So if this is 2%, 2, 0 0.02, it says, don't worry, we'll format this later on. So an account with present value, present value at a, this is 0 0.02, monthly interest rate. This is an example, assuming it's 0 0.02. Monthly interest rate left in an, in an account for, if it's seven months, it would say left in an account for seven months will earn you a future value of, you know, of future value. Now, when you pass in arguments into the print function this way, they are displayed, each of the arguments are displayed with a space separate in them. So this will be displayed this way. It's going to be displayed with is as as an account with present value space present value space at a space monthly interest rate space monthly interest rate left in an account so basically it's going to uh, display these arguments with a space separate in them all right so basically main function is going to ask the user for details the user is going to basically type in the details it's going to return those values we are using those values in the future va value function to basically calculate the future value and display the results in a nice print statement. So let's try this out and see what we have so far. We'll format the values um, with, as, as we're doing this. So let me run this, save this where I, I save the programs <coughs> on the desktop, sorry. Program challenges of the five. And this is going to be called future value. So first of all, I'm going to create a new folder in chapter five and call this future value and save this as future value dot pi. Let's see if we have any errors, first of all. Oh, so yeah, <laughs> I, I always do this, my goodness. All right, so now we have defined the functions. You can see we, we defined all three functions. We have our main function. Um, but the thing is, nothing is going to happen because we haven't called the main function. Although we've called you know some functions here in the main function the main function itself is a function and we've only defined it okay we need to call it for the main function to basically call these other functions and basically run the program okay so nothing is going to happen on, unless you call the main function and so I'm going to basically call the main function here this way alright so now I run it you know, now when I run it something is going to happen alright so now we see it says please enter the present value right so Let's say my account has ten thousand dollars, right? Um, again, we'll format these values later on. Um, let's say at a, at a monthly interest rate of two percent, right? So I'm going to type in two. 
please enter the number of months and money will be left in there. Let's say I want to leave it in there for one year. So I'm going to type in 12 months, right? And hit enter. And it says an account <coughs> with present value. And we need to format this later on because the string is going off the screen. So an account with present value, $10,000. At a, at a 0 0.02 monthly interest rate left in an left in an account for 12 months will earn you a future value of 12,682 okay so basically all we have to do is just we, it seems to be working we have to basically cl clean it up a little bit so let's keep this this here and then and fix it